I'm with Ryan Arnold, that's part owner of a citrus orchard in South Australia called Pay Up Produce. And there's about 12 hectares of afuras growing on the orchard. And we're in a block of afuras that's grown under netting. Yeah, um, this is a patch of afura mandarins on citrange rootstock. They were 2005 plants. So these trees are around that 17 years old. Traditionally, we manage these by um, probably yearly light hand pruning, taking the odd centre limb out. We struggle to sort of keep up um, just with hand pruning, so then we've employed saws and hedging over the seasons as well, so to bring the tops down and to bring the sides in. And also we were finding with our management methods that we were getting really boom bust yields, so we would have a year of good yields where we've where the trees were coming off a lighter crop and, and they'd throw a 60 tonne the hectare crop and then we'd find the next year they'd overcropped um, and we had to hedge so then we'd, the yield would crash down to, to 15 tonnes a hectare or less sometimes. We might have been averaging around 30 to 35 tonnes a hectare on average as we got to sort of year 13, 14, 15 um, and for the amount of I suppose effort and work we were putting into the patch, it just wasn't returning for us. I took Steve into this patch. I think um, the trees were, they were like a jungle. Um, there was no sunlight um, in between the trees. It felt like you were, felt like the sun was gone when you walked down the rows. Um, the middles of the trees were just full of water shoots with no lateral growth on it. And then anything that was lateral was dead and sticky. Um, they would only crop on the tops. Um, with any significant size um, because that's where the sun was hitting. Any fruit on the sides was generally small and, and wouldn't colour because there was no sunlight penetrating for it to colour. Um, we had access issues with tractors. Um, so getting sprays on timely was, was hard. Um, yeah, and, and then no pickers really wanted to come in here because one, the yield was, the yield was light. Um, it was hard to get because it was on the tops. Um, and the fruit wasn't wasn't brilliant, so yeah, it wasn't it wasn't easy to get pickers for the patch. So Steve had some theories and pruned a few trees, um, just looking to open them up a bit, get some light into the trees. Try and um, when we do come in and prune, try and do it in a balanced way. But if we do that in an unbalanced way by hedging one side off or hedging the tops down low, we just find that that regrowth from that point. Um, just come powers back. So I think Steve came in with a the theory of trying to take even the tree out. I suppose set the tree up with four main limbs. Let's try and open that structure out a little bit um, and then come in with a, with a mindset to manage the regrowth. And um, I saw a couple of trees he did it. It made sense and looked good. And I thought, I reckon you could go a bit, bit harder. I think looking at what's what Steve was doing. So yeah, I've, I've taken five trees with Steve's theories and I've probably um, times it by 200%. With that first prune, I focused on taking big cuts out the center. These trees were touching, touching the net up the top. Um, I did have a hedger come in and hedge them down and I used that as an opportunity then to reduce some of that weight of wood above but then to try and reform the trees. I also looked at the sides of the trees and I wanted to con I suppose create some windows around as well so that that was my theory I wanted to open the tree out from the center bring it down but also look at the side of the tree and bring it in a little bit as well. Yeah so if, if we look at this tree now there's a ladder ladder sitting there everything that is on this tree at the moment and even next year's flowering wood, we are going to be able to pick from this ladder. And my aim is to keep that managed ongoing at around that height. We are getting light into the center of the tree. We've got some good balanced, balanced healthy wood in the centers of these trees. Um, light is penetrating, getting on that wood. It's, it's produced, even with the first year's prune, it's produced enough carbohydrates to fruit inside the tree. I'd expect next year we'll have more fruit inside the tree with, with a second year and, and, some, and some a little bit older balanced wood inside the tree now. I think ongoing, somewhere in the realms of five to seven dollars a tree, I'm hoping that we can keep these trees managed and balanced um, going forward now. So we're, we're looking at tr 
and I, I think, look at the trees I've got here now. I've already got just season two, 45 tonnes a hectare to 50 tonnes a hectare um, on these five trees equivalent. Um, so that gives me confidence that I, th I think going forward we can, we can improve on that um, as I form the shape of the tree and create wood where I need it. So for, for this patch, if I can then take this from a 35 tonne a hectare average yield and get it into a consistent yield of around 55 tonnes a hectare, um, I'm increasing 20 tonnes a hectare, um, my yield for the patch. And at $800 a tonne, 20 tonnes a hectare equates to a return of around $30 a tree better um, than if I was at 35 tonnes a hectare. Um, and e even if that yields only a 10 tonne a hectare ben benefit, we're, we're at 45 consistently, I'm still $14 a tree better off um, with, these, with these trees cropping at 45 tonnes a hectare than I am with them at 35 tonnes a hectare. Um, and my ongoing cost, I feel, is in that 5 to $7 range, so we're well above a return on investment. I, I'd just really like to thank Steve um, from the New South Wales DPI and Hort Innovation um, for, for ringing me and, and bringing this project idea out here. Um, if, if it wasn't for projects like this, um, I might have given up on this patch and, and pushed it out. Without these projects happening on farm with growers um, and giving us a really tangible involvement in, in the projects as well, it's, it's really hard to, to get the message, message out and I think it's imperative that growers are involved and guys like Steve come out and share their knowledge with us and, and put the research on the farms. Mm -hmm.